Here we're going to look at the inverse of a square matrix. And before we look at the inverse of a matrix, uh, I want to talk about the multiplicative inverse of a number. So if I had the number 4 uh, and we multiply this by its multiplicative inverse, then that means we're going to multiply it by 1 over 4. And certainly if we do that, that's going to be equal to 1. And remember, for multiplication, one is the identity. So we want to find the same thing for our matrix. If we take matrix A and we multiply that by its inverse, so here A to the negative one, this is uh, the inverse of A, then we want this to be equal to the identity matrix. And I'll just call this I sub N, where N is the order based on the order of A. It also means that if you were to take the inverse of A and multiply that by A, you're still going to get the identity matrix. So anytime you multiply two matrices together and you get the identity matrix, that tells you that the two matrices are inverses of each other. Now, when you find the inverse of a matrix, your matrix must be square. Okay, so you must have a square matrix. In other words, a 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4, so on. Okay, so let's look at an example of how we can go about finding the inverse here of our matrix. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to show you several different ways. Uh, if I have matrix A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 7. Now I'm going to show you how to do this uh, a couple different ways. Here I'm going to show you one way just so that you can kind of see the steps and then I'm going to show you a little bit easier way and then we're going to actually use the calculator. So if this is our matrix then we know that the identity that we're talking about is a 2 by 2 which is 1 0 0 1. So if we want to find the inverse by hand of matrix A then we're going to bring down matrix A and we're going to write 1, 2, 3, 7 and then we're going to bring down the identity matrix right next to it 1, 0, 0, 1 and now we want to go through these row operations of what we did before we want to change matrix A into the identity matrix. So I'm going to quickly go through this because I'm not going to really require you to do this, but I want you to understand how we perform uh, these steps. Well, we want to have the first entry to be a 1, which is already a 1, so we want to make below this, we want to make the 3 a 0 now. So we're going to take and multiply this first row by 3 and add it to the second row. So if we do that, we're still going to have 1, 2, 1, 0 on the top. So 3 times 1 is 3. Whoops, that's not going to work because 3 times 1 is going to give us 6. So we need to multiply by a negative 3. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 7 Okay, so we have what? Negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. And then we're going to add that to the 7, so that's going to be 1. And then we have negative 3 times 1 added to 0. So it's a negative 3 and 0 is going to be negative 3. Negative 3 and 0 is 0. Add that to 1 here on the bottom, so that's going to give us 1. All right, so now we have what we wanted. We wanted this to be a 1. We want this to be a 0, okay? Now, this number, we're in luck. This is already a 1, okay? Now, we want to make this number up here a 0 because we want to change this here is matrix A. We want to change that to the identity. So, in order to make this a 0, we're going to have to now multiply this row by negative 2 and add it to the first one. So we're going to leave the bottom alone 
And if we multiply negative 2 times 0 and add it to 1, that's still going to be 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. And then we're going to get negative 2 times negative 3, which is 6, added to 1 is 7. Negative 2 to 1 is negative 2, plus 0 is negative 2. So now we have changed this here to the identity matrix where we have 1, 0, 0, 1. And as doing so, as we change our matrix A to the identity matrix, we change the identity matrix over here. This is now the inverse. So from the original here, we had A was equal to 1, 2, 3, 7, and the inverse is equal to 7, negative 2, negative 3, 1. So in other words, if you were to multiply these two together, you would end up with the identity matrix. And here, it's not going to matter which order we multiply these. You could take a times A inverse, or we could take the inverse multiplied by A. Either way, we would end up with the identity. Now, if we have a 2 by 2 matrix, there is a shortcut. And I want to look at the same matrix here. We had 1, 2, 3, 7. And if we want to find the inverse, there is a formula that we can use. And it states if we have a 2 by 2 matrix, A, B, C, D, then we can find the inverse by taking 1 over A times D. So you're going to kind of cross multiply A times D minus B times C. And we're going to multiply that. This is going to be a scalar multiple. And you're going to multiply that here we're going to switch the diagonal A and D. So you're going to put D first and then A here. And then we're going to simply change the sign of B. So we're going to make that a negative B. And then this will become a negative C. So if we use this over here to find the inverse of A, that says that we're going to take 1 divided by a times d, so that would be in this case 1 times 7 minus b times c, so that would be 2 times 3. Okay, and then we're going to take this and multiply. We're going to switch a and d, so 1 and 7, so this becomes 7, this becomes 1. And then we're going to simply change the sign here. So we have a negative 2 and a negative 3. So we now have 1 over 7 minus 6. So that's 1 over 1. So A inverse, if this is 1 over 1, well, if you multiply the matrix by 1, you're just going to end up with the exact same matrix. 7, negative 2, negative 3, positive 1. And if we compare this answer to what we found before, isn't that the same thing? 7, negative 2, negative 3, 1. 7, negative 2, negative 3, 1. Now, this formula obviously over here only works if you have a 2 by 2 matrix. So let's look at using that formula one more time. If I look at this next example here, let's say that we have A is equal to, let's say, 6, 7, negative 5, 13. Okay, and if we want to use the same formula, I'll copy this down one more time here, you would have A, B, C, D. And the inverse is then going to be equal to 1 over A times D minus B times C. You're going to switch the order for A and D. 
and take the negative of the other two. So if we apply that over here, then we're going to have the inverse is going to be 1 over a times d, so that's 6 times 13. Well, 6 times 13, that's going to be 78 minus, and then b times c, negative 5 and 7, that would be a negative 35. And then we have to multiply that by, we're switching d and a, so that means we now have 13 and 6. And we take the negative of the others, so that means now we're going to have negative 7, and then we would have a positive 5. Okay, and if we simplify this, we then have 1 over 78 minus a negative, so that's plus, and that adds to 113, and we would get 13, negative 7, 5, and 6. So this is the answer for the inverse of A. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. We have 1 over 113. You could leave this 1 over 113 out front or you could actually multiply that and you would get 13 over 113, negative 7 over 113, and 5 over 113, and 6 over 113. So either way is correct. I think it probably looks a little bit nicer if we leave it on the outside. Okay. Now we also want to look at how can we use the calculator. So let's look at how can we use our calculator to solve this problem. Well, let's look at the exact same one that we had here. If we had A was equal to six, seven, negative five, 13. And this is gonna be really easy. If we go to the calculator, go into matrix, we're gonna go over to edit and select number one. And we have a two by two matrix. And then we need to type in six, seven, negative five, and 13. And then I'm going to quit. We're going to go back into the matrix, select matrix A. And now for the inverse over here at the far left, you see it's the from the second function key. It's one, two, three buttons down. You have this X to the negative one. And this is going to give you the inverse matrix. Now when we hit enter, notice once again, you're going to get a whole bunch of decimals. I would suggest going to math and then select number one to fraction and hit enter and it's going to change <clears throat> it's going to change your decimals into fractions and if we copy this over this should be the same answer we had from before so notice if we compare this to this one they're the same and of course, if we took out the 113, it's going to match up with this answer over here. So we've looked at three ways that we can do this. If you have a two by two matrix, one way to find it is you can set up your matrix with the identity, perform your row operations to simplify your matrix to the identity. And as you do that, you're going to change the identity matrix into the inverse matrix. Or, as long as you have a 2x2 two two matrix, we can certainly just use this formula here to find the inverse. Or, the third option is we can enter it into the calculator and it will find the inverse for you. Now, what happens if we have a matrix that is 3x3 three three or 4x4? Four four? Well, if we have, for an example, a 3x3 three three matrix, and let's say that we have 1, 2, 2, three, seven, nine, negative one, negative four, negative seven. If we want to find the inverse, then for this example, I would simply say, just find the inverse using your calculator. Uh, you could use uh, the same process we, 
process we did at the first, you could write this down and you could write the identity matrix next to it. But then you'd have to go through a lot of row operations to simplify this. So if we go to the calculator, we could go into the matrix, scroll over to edit, and here we would have a three by three. And if I type this in, we get one, enter, two, two, three, seven, nine, negative one, negative four, and a negative seven. And once we have this in, you select your matrix, hit the inverse, which is the X to the negative one. We hit enter and there we have the inverse matrix. <clears throat> so if we copy this this is the inverse for A. Now to show you if I was to take let me clear the screen for us. If we go into matrix and I select A and I multiply this by wrong button go into matrix and select A again but now I'm going to make it inverse so if we take A times A inverse what's that going to equal well when I hit enter we better get the identity matrix where we have all ones on the diagonal and everything else is a zero so because we multiply these two together and we get the identity we know that that is the inverse matrix. Now I do want to point out what happens if I give you this problem. We have another three by three matrix. Three, two, one, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, two. And we want to find the inverse. Well, if we go once again to the calculator, go into the matrix, scroll over to edit. We have a three by three, three, two, one, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, two. And if I go to select matrix A and we take the inverse and if I hit enter notice here we get an error and that's because not every square matrix will have an inverse so let me point this out here uh, in this example A does not have an inverse. Now, in order for a matrix to have an inverse, it must be a square matrix. Now, all square matrices will not have an inverse. So here we have an example of a square matrix. And because of this error message, uh, we know that this matrix here does not have an inverse. So keep that in mind. It is possible that you are not able to find the inverse because it does not exist. So I want you to be aware of the steps here of how we find the inverse using the identity. Uh, be familiar with this formula if you have a two by two matrix. And then keep in mind, you can certainly use the calculator. And if you get something such as a three by three matrix, certainly put it into the calculator and it will find the inverse for you.